The movie opens with a terrified young woman running out of her house fleeing from something unseen. She does a lap avoiding the slow moving entity and refusing neighbors offers of help. Are you okay? Running back inside ignoring her father's concerns, she grabs the car keys and drives away finally ending the two minute one take. Traveling long into the night to get some distance on it Annie then pulls over at a beach to take a rest. She apologizes to her father on the phone for how she's been acting lately and what will be her final farewell, as her body is then found in the morning brutally mangled. The film then switches to Jamie taking a swim in her pool where she gets peeped on by the locals. Inside her sister Kelly's watching TV with her best friends Yara and Paul, who's had a crush on Jamie for years. After getting herself ready for a date with a new guy she just met, she meets Hugh at the movies and they spend the entire time playing a game where you pick someone in the crowd that you would trade places with and the other person has to guess who you chose. Hugh picks a kid saying how great it would be to be so carefree and happy again. When it's Hugh's turn to guess who Jamie chose, he points out a woman at the entrance but Jay can't see her. He starts acting worried and quickly leaves the theater dragging his date along who just thinks he saw an ex-girlfriend. They go to a diner to finish their date while the camera focuses on a person in the background following them. The next day Jamie tells her sister about how strange it all went with Hugh, when they see the neighbor Greg cleaning his car across the road. On their next date Jamie and her date begin to get physical and take things to Hugh's car. Afterwards he goes to the boot of his car leaving her in a gleeful state to ponder, then returns suddenly chloroforming her. A short time later Jay wakes up tied to a wheelchair with Hugh explaining that he's passed on a curse to her. He sees what he was afraid of at the cinema and points out to Jay an entity walking at a consistent pace towards them, telling her that it can take the form of anyone and will kill her should it catch her. When it does it will return to chasing him, implying that he also gave the curse to Annie but she didn't want to pass it on. Hugh takes her home and dumps her out front of her place to be found by her sister. When the police are called in it gives Greg's mother a reason to call the neighboring family a mess, as they make speculations on what happened. The police interview Jamie and begin a search for Hugh but are unable to find him as both his name and address were fake. Tests turn up negative for anything passed on physically while the pervy neighborhood kid is shown to go through anything to get a glimpse. The next day at school sure enough Jamie spots the entity walking towards her at that same consistent pace. She runs out of class and into the hallway where it follows her but can't be seen by anyone else. Explaining the details of what happened to her sister, they decide to have a sleepover of all her friends with Paul volunteering to stay awake downstairs on watch. Naturally Jamie can't sleep so she stays up with him swapping stories of their childhood when they hear a noise coming from the kitchen. After examining it Paul finds a smashed window but nothing else so he goes upstairs to call the police. When Jamie goes to check it out herself she finds a ravaged woman slowly walking towards her with a leak. She legs it up the stairs into the bedroom screaming and cowers until she's joined by Paul and Kelly, when they begin to hear banging on the door but receive no answer. They open it to find Yara having just been eating, when the entity follows her into the room unseen by everyone but Jamie. To the confusion of the others she runs out of the house and takes a bike past Greg to a nearby playground. Sitting on a swing waiting to see who'll get to her first, her friends run out of the shadows obviously moving at a much faster pace than the creepin' demon. Jamie begins to see Greg walking towards them but the others also see him so she has a moment of relief. Knowing she needs to find Hugh to get answers for the curse, Greg agrees to drive Jamie and the others and they begin tracking him down. They start by going to the address he gave her while they were dating which looks to be a squatter's paradise. Inside they find tins on the windows used as an alarm if something were to try to smash its way inside, and unlabeled meds most likely to stay awake. While Jamie starts to get nervous of everyone just walking her way, Detective Paul finds an old photograph of Hugh attending school so they all travel there to find out his real name. Showing someone possibly following in the distance, they learn from the admin office that his real name is Jeff. The group go to his house where he casually sits them down on the grass and explains the curse's lengthy origins, that he got it from a woman at a bar but can't remember her name. He tells Jay that she needs to sleep with someone in order to pass it on and just hope they do the same, then begins freaking out over just a normal girl passing by as he's clearly still traumatized. The group travels to Greg's family's beach house to get some distance on the entity and to decide if Jamie wants to pass the curse on and condemn another poor soul. Right away Greg begins to teach her how to use a gun to protect herself for when it returns and they spend the next day at the beach. While all sitting in an awkward silence Yara begins to approach in the background, when the real Yara is shown entering the frame in front of them. Kelly notices her sister's hair float but doesn't see the entity as it grabs Jamie but not her skin. Paul hits it with a lawn chair getting knocked away but giving them all the chance to flee towards the boathouse. Using the pistol Jamie fires at it while almost hitting Greg but the entity takes the bullet to the neck and keeps on following, even switching back to the tall man briefly to do a walk by. A hole suddenly blown through the door but nothing enters, when Greg sticks his head inside thinking they did something to it and saying the coast is clear. The moment he leaves the entity pokes the pervy kid's head and so Jay runs faster than ever and straight for the car, taking it alone and ignoring the others while they attempt to catch up. 
she swerves to avoid another vehicle and crashes into a cornfield. When she comes to Jamie's in the hospital being treated for a broken arm and with all her friends sleeping beside her. More terrified than ever and staring at the open door, she decides to pass the curse on, sleeping with Greg while keeping an eye on what I can only assume now is a door that's closed. After three days Greg still hasn't seen anything so when Jay's released she's still just as scared as ever. Greg attempts to visit but she locks herself in her room to avoid contact with all her friends. One night as Jamie's looking out her window, she sees Greg walking home when he smashes the window and leaps in. Realizing it's the entity she races over and enters the same way, finding that it's now turned into Greg's mom and banging on his door. When he opens it she leaps on him and Jamie witnesses how the entity kills people, when it grinds the life out of Greg. Now with the curse reverted back onto her and the demon in slow pursuit once again, Jamie takes off alone feeling guilty for passing it on to Greg and getting him killed. Spending the night sleeping on the hood of the car as far away as she can, she wakes in the morning to find three men on their boat just off the shoreline. Attempting to distance herself from the evil for good, she undresses and goes into the water hoping to pass it on to a stranger. When she gets back home she has a visit from Paul who proposes that she sleep with him to get rid of the curse, but she turns it down not wanting to possibly get him killed. After a brief sighting of the entity implying that Jamie never passed it on or the Bodies just didn't live long, they go to a deserted swimming pool in hopes of luring it into the water and killing it with electricity. The friends line the rim with household electricals and wait for it to enter so they can start throwing them at it, as Jamie acts as the bait and waits in the center of the pool for hours. When it finally shows up it's taken the form of the two girls' father and foils their plan by throwing the items into the pool. Jay dives underwater avoiding most damage but taking a few objects to the head. Only having the levitating appliances and brief directions from Jamie to go by, a blind shot from Paul accidentally hits Yara in the leg. As it continues to try to electrocute its target, Kelly throws a sheet over the entity's whole body allowing Paul to get a clean headshot sending it falling into the water. Before Jamie can get out it returns grabbing her by the ankle and dragging her under, but shooting around her feet Paul hits a lucky headshot before it gets to the grinding. Having just branded her with a handprint, Jamie checks the pool to see the entity seemingly destroyed into a mist of stylized red. They all go home when Paul and Jay finally sleep together but afterwards continue to show their paranoia. After contemplating sleeping with someone else just in case, they all spend their days with Yara as she recovers from Paul's bad aim in the hospital. Yara! Things return to normal but with the two friends now dating and holding hands, as a person's shown following them down the street. And the movie ends. So you made it. I appreciate your time. I couldn't have done it without you. Tell your mother I said thanks.